So I thought I would document Phoebe's bath, like well, after her bath and her little routine. So I'm just gonna bring you guys up to speed. She actually just had a little bath, which apparently her hair is wet still. <laughs> um, she had a bath, but more is a rinse off. Um, I haven't bathed Phoebe or gave her a rinse off in probably a year. Um, believe it or not, Phoebe's been with me for two years. And um, so right now she's kind of like the veteran of my silicone babies. And she's not going anywhere, so her years will keep adding. Um, but I am doing some bonding with her today, which is wonderful. Um, <laughs> and it just reminded me of how amazing she is, flaws and all. I love her so much and um like I said before she's always in the background she's the only baby that like sleeps in my room like 100% of the time she has a permanent bed <laughs> um in my room and so now I have Jaden and Jaden is my little heartbeat um so it's funny because I like to think Jaden is going to be the one but you guys know Phoebe is definitely my first love so I don't know I I am um going to like I said get her dress do her hair um and we'll go from there but this is like very um good for for her because like I said I hadn't given her a bath or anything so she has open eyes and one of the things i want to tell you guys is that make sure you take like a q-tip and make sure you dry inside those eyes um she doesn't have a drink and wet so i don't have to worry about the water in her mouth but i still will go in and make sure she's drying her mouth and stuff because as you can see well you might can't see but <laughs> But she's still kind of wet in there and like even her nose. Like if I squish her little nose, a little bit of water will squish out a little bit that's got in there during her little bath. So um, it's all part of self-care. She doesn't have on a diaper right now. So that's why she has this little blanket over her. And um, Phoebe does have elbow armatures would work really great with her even though she's like super soft. Phoebe is the softest baby I've ever had ever in my entire collecting um she is you know she just have an amazing amazing feel to her i love the super soft i know a lot of people like i don't like it with the bones but when i put her in a sleeper it's like she's the most cuddly ever but i'm not going to talk here i'm going to pause it here and i'm going to go ahead and do some other stuff with her to prep her for her clothes change and we'll go from there so the one thing I know about Phoebe for me is that she is totally a sleeper baby for me because she's so cuddly. So I'm going to put her in a sleeper or something like, you know, that's going to let her just be my cuddle bug. And I don't normally like babies with feet in sleep sleepers or pants and stuff like that. But for her, it's different. So, so a lot of um, the... Um, I was like on her stomach, you see, like, it looks like dirt, dark to me. But it's a lot of shadows casting on her stomach, so just so you guys know. Um, but the other thing is there was this crazy um, idea that the willow sculpts are extremely big babies. They are long, but they are still very newborn. So this is actually a size, a newborn um, size uh, pants. And she... You know, she fits them fine. Her foot, this foot is more bald. So, like, you can see her, where it's balled up and so it didn't, it's not all the way down at the bottom so that it can fit perfectly in the foot part. But with adjusting it, it actually fits. You can tell more about this foot since it's straight. It actually fits in this actual part that's for the foot. So... I'm gonna put her on her shirt <laughs> so so we got her dress and I don't know she was sucking both of her fingers now she just have one in her mouth but anyway um so yeah so that's that's Phoebe um 
she is the little girl she's gonna be all snuggly cuddly and all that great jazz um i don't know like there's so many different things that's sentimental about her that um like i said even if she was like perfectly not flawed or had any mistakes made on her she would be a forever baby for me um every single thing that i about this baby is sentimental from her scope to the um color of her skin tone to her the style in which i chose for her to be rooted um her color eyes just everything about her just was just really a sentimental thing for me um she represent like for me she represent like all of my girl my grown girls so daughters and so there's a lot um with that and then of course the most one that she's more similar to or as far as like skin tone so it's skin tone she's more towards my third daughter but facial features more towards my second daughter and then there's other little things like her size and other stuff and I guess facial features too a little bit with the first one daughter so that's that's how that works so she has a lot of a lot of things that the reason why I don't even consider ever partnering with her and I think that's kind of important to me when I collect being that you know I I now paint and so I, I have a little bit of control over the type of babies that I bring in my, to my collection um, because some I can paint myself, some I can't, you know, quite get the vision that I, I, I want for a particular sculpt. But I am someone that get bored with, with the babies after a while. And I am someone that like to see other, other dolls and I switch out my collection a lot. So for me, I'm kind of tired of that because I don't really like the, the buying and selling process that much. And it's such an emotional drag to you know, purchase a baby and spend all the money and, you know, get it and then just be like, ah, oh, this is not really what I wanted or whatever the case may be or, you know, or to get it and just be head over heels for it and then two weeks later it's like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. So it's, you know, it's just a lot for that to go back and forth. So I found that the babies that stay in my collection the longest is if I have a natural, organic, you know sentimental bond with them not one that's kind of forced because sometimes i think i kind of try to force it like i'll say oh this baby is going to represent this but i don't really feel it in my heart because it doesn't match what i want it to be and how i feel about it if that makes sense so i may paint a baby and say oh i'm naming this baby after my grandmother or i'm naming this baby after you know my daughter or my you know crush or whatever and then, but I don't really feel that with that baby. So over time, it's like, okay, this one is going to get sold. <laughs> um, so, and then sometimes I'm all in love with it. And then I get it rooted. And it's like, when I see it with hair, it's like, ah, I don't know. I don't really like it that much more type thing. So I've been, even with my own work, I've been trying to be a little bit more careful with saying, okay, I'm going to see how this goes after it get rooted if i'm gonna get it rooted because some babies i don't play in ever get rooted but yeah so that's that's how it go but um so i think her and Jaden both have sentimental value for me and i think that's why i kind of you know toggle between which one of them is going to be my number one um i think today phoebe is my number one uh and Jaden is my number two but just yesterday, Jaden was my number one and Phoebe was my number two. So, I don't know. That's how it go. But um, the good thing is it doesn't matter. You don't have to, like, stick to something and you don't have to be like, oh, this is my favorite baby and, oh, my God, you can't change your mind tomorrow or feel different later. The good thing about it is, is that if you have a collection with multiple babies, and I don't think, like, sometimes I feel like artists get 
upset or jealous of a collector say, oh, I love this baby. Oh my God, I just want this baby over all my other babies. And they're like, oh, so you don't like my doll that I painted for you anymore? Like, I don't think that that should be a thing because us as collectors, we're very emotional and it goes up and down. I think it depends on what mood you're in that day or, you know, how you're feeling about, like, you might put it on the cutest little outfit and now all of a sudden you're just really connected with the baby because you're like, oh my God, I remember. Or you put it on an outfit, say, your grandchild wore or your child wore. You're like, oh, I remember when so-and-so had that. Like, I have a lot of Gabby toddler clothes and so sometimes I put my babies on like her pajamas and stuff like that that was her pajamas so of course if I see Zora in Gabby's old pajamas I'm gonna be like oh my god it's gonna remind me of when Gabby was that little and then there's this emotional rush and that's now my favorite baby for today because I you know it's triggered a happy emotion the good thing about it is like I said the other good thing about it is it rotates and there's times where you just want to put the doll on the shelf and just look at it and that's fine and then you'll come back to it so I don't feel like you know I, I understand where it'd be like oh I feel guilty I'm not interacting with it or and you know I, someone else can be in enjoying it that's not usually my case because I don't this is gonna sound cold but I'm gonna be honest with you I don't really care if somebody enjoy it or not a lot of times I feel guilty because my money is just not being enjoyed. Like if I walk past that doll and I absolutely feel nothing with it on the shelf, because I don't have to hold my dolls to get excited about them. So if I walk past that doll and I feel absolutely nothing, then I don't feel bad because someone else is not enjoying it. I don't feel bad because, oh, the doll hasn't been touched. Because in the end of the day, I am you know, I have the reality enough that these dolls don't have feelings and they don't care if they're held or not because they, they're not real. So it doesn't bother me. I know it sounds better to say that. And I'm not speaking for everyone. I'm just speaking for myself. I know it sounds better to say, oh, someone else can be loving. I honestly don't care if I, if I sell you a doll and you pay $800 or $1,500 and you take that doll and you throw it in your garbage, your dumpster when, you know, you get it. I don't care if you video it. Listen, I'm just going to be like, oh, that was dumb. <laughs> she wasted her money. She should have just sold it. But I'm not going to be like, oh, my God, I can't believe she did that to Susie Q. I'm just like, oh, well, I got my money. That's her. You know, I I don't look at it in that way. I look at it like, you know, okay, well, let me just sell this and put my money back. So it becomes a money thing. So that's the thing, too. When I say my dollars are investments and I look at them in that way. Um, I really don't consider money a whole lot like when I'm in love with the doll. But once I'm out of love with the doll, all it is is money to me. And that's just that. Um, so, and I'm not afraid to say that. So that, you know, it is what it is. So, I guess that's all I have to say. <laughs> since I was just deciding to like because I was going to do that rate my baby thing again and I was just like it's very hard to rate my babies because it's a constant sliding scale um I have a baby in my collection I won't say which one it is but I absolutely do not touch that baby at all I have no desire to pick it up I don't want to pick it up I don't want to change it but I love looking at it so it is almost like a shelf baby and it was a very expensive baby and I'm just like Psh, okay you know um but the moment that I look at that baby and I feel like why do why are you even here <laughs> get out of my house you know what I'm just saying <laughs> like the moment I you know but that's not the only reason I sell too so of course there's times when I sell because okay I love you but I think I want this other baby so bad and I don't want to miss the opportunity so I'm gonna take the chance of letting you go I'm gonna be upset when I have to put you in the box because I'm usually okay like with the selling process and then you know the packing and all that but the moment I have to put that baby in that box and know that this is final and that I'm not gonna see this baby again in my collection I become sad but the moment it reaches the mommy and they're like, okay, everything's good, boom. Okay, my money is free. I'm on to the next thing. I'm not one that usually lingers and say, oh my God, I wish I had that baby back or whatever. You know, I've had a few that I'm like, ah, oh, did I make the right decision? 
a lot of times I feel a little bit remorse when, well, I'm going to say a lot of times, but the times that I have felt some remorse is when I sold it and the next doll that I get was not better than the one that I sold. And I'm just like, Ugh. you know, um, so that's, that's like how I feel like the journey go. You know, I see all these little crazy little piss tail posts about, oh, she loves it this week, but tomorrow will be a different story. Yep, that's true. You know, I, I, that used to bother me when people would say stuff like that. It's like, they're talking about me, <laughs> but now it's like, you're right. <laughs> it's very true. Um, I like it today, but tomorrow, man, eh, not so much. You know what I mean? Um, you know, like I said, you know, as you guys know, I sold my tink. Y'all may or may not know. I sold my Zuri by Belira baby. I sold it because I wanted to bring Austin home and I didn't want to fork out all that money without, you know, um, you know, on my own. So I sold Zuri to get Austin and she was beautiful. The other, the mommy wanted a baby so, so dark in complexion that was, you know, nicely done. And I think she was definitely nicely done and a beautiful baby, but I like like hyper crazy details in my babies. And I wanted, I wanted the, the, the Austin from Haley because she did a lot of things in the face that I really love. Um, so I went for it. And so, and I, I'm not, I'm not upset. I'm not, I'm not, I'm perfectly okay with it. I don't regret myself or anything. So it's just, it's a lot of ups and downs with the collecting and everybody do their stuff different. Everything, everybody process everything different. Some people, it's not even that deep. You know, some people it's like, oh, I like this doll today. I'm going to sell it tomorrow. Oh, this is cute. They put the doll on the shelf. They take pictures of it. Some people, it's all about a contest. Oh, she got her baby on, um, Zumba Wumba clothes. I'm going to put mine on Bugalaga Bega clothes because they cost more. And let me show you this. Oh, you think you can do spin curls? Oh, my baby going to have twists, wraps, pineapple waves, and a swoop to the side. You know what I mean? Like, some people, for them, it's the 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 competitiveness of the collecting. Or, oh, she got a sold out kit? I'm going to get a sold out kit. She got a full body? I'm going to get a full body. She got a dark skin baby? I'm going to get a dark skin baby. You know? Whatever it is that, that makes you tick and you find some happiness in who am I to argue with that? I just want to see everybody happy and having a good time. The only time it bothers me is when you come into my space and try to steal my joy away from me and tell me what to do. So as long as you're not doing that, we're good. I don't care. Like, I don't care if you want to, you know, do flips on top of the house with your cat in one hand and your dog in the other and the baby, you know, under the bottom of your feet. I don't, it's your your thing, whatever you want to do, as long as it doesn't affect me. And yeah, I have my comments. I make my commentary. I think it's crazy that people like for their pets to be licking all over their dolls and then the next minute they're selling it. And now I gotta, you know, not I, but then now the next person gets to inherit your doggy germs or your cat hair or whatever it is, or rodents or whatever y'all have on your dolls. Yeah, I think it's kind of weird. That's my personal thoughts on it, but some pe other people, they they have the equal love for pets. You know, I'm a cat lover. You're a cat lover. We both like cat hair. Hey, let's swap. You know, I'll give you my brown cat hair for your black cat hair with your doll. You know, and they're okay with it. Happy family. Great for them. So, all I'm saying is to say that everybody's not going to like the same thing. You know, there's things that I do that people think are weird. There's going to be things that I... You know, say people think are, are crazy. Like, oh my God, why did she do that? Why did she say that? You know, so it's going to never, you're never going to like, you know, fit in with everybody. So vibe with who you vibe with, you know, love what you love, enjoy your dolls and keep it moving. All right, guys, that is it for today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.